Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in this video, we're gonna look at how to create an experience and leveling system, where each time we defeat an enemy, we gain experience, and a progress bar tracks our movement toward each level. Let's get started. Now this video does work as a standalone video, and you don't need anything pre-set up. While I do have a health and stats UI here, we won't be interacting with them in this video. Let's begin by right-clicking in the hierarchy, going to UI, Canvas, and I'm going to call this Experience Canvas. We can then head over to our Canvas Scaler and make sure that our UI scale mode is set to scale with screen size with a reference resolution of 1920 by 1080. If you're clicked on your game view, you can see here what our resolution is in the game currently, and we just want to make sure that it matches what we put as our reference. All this does is make it so that later, if we play this game on a different screen size, all our UI will scale with that screen so that it always takes up the same screen space. Now with that done, we can right click on our new canvas, go to UI slider, and I'm gonna call mine experience slider. And if we expand this up, you can see that there's a lot going on here. We can actually simplify this right off the bat by getting rid of the handle slide area as we're not making an interactable UI here. Now I'm gonna to go to my scene view, double click the slider so I can find out where on earth this thing went. And I'm just gonna move mine up underneath my HP UI here. Now the very first thing I'm gonna do is just go to the slider itself, which essentially just houses the slider component. And here you can see that if we slide our value, the slider just goes across. And so in this video, we'll be coding our UI to actually fill up as we gain experience. The one other thing we wanna do here is just go to our rec transform and set the size for this slider. I'm gonna go with 550 by 60, as I think that's going to look quite nice underneath our health UI. Now the background is just the bar that will appear when our experience bar is empty. And so here I'm just gonna set mine to a sort of dark gray colors. I think that's gonna look pretty nice. In game view, we can see how that will look. Now at the moment, this is set to stretch to fill the entire slider area. However, it's only set horizontally. So let's just click on our anchor presets here and let's just expand it in all directions. The fill area is of course the area our fill will use when it's full and we'll also expand it both horizontally and vertically. Now, if we go to our experience slider and we slide our value across, you can see that it's filling up that entire area. I'm actually just going to give this a slight margin. I'm gonna go with five units on all sides and that'll give us a bit of an outline. Though you can see that currently the left and right margins aren't appearing. So let's go to our fill itself. It automatically set these to negative five. I'm just gonna put them at zero so that we get that outline all the way around the outside. I'm just going to pick a blue UI color so it matches everything else. If you wanted, you could slide your own images into the source image on each of these, but I'm just gonna stick with the default Unity UI. One more thing we wanna do here is just right click on our experience slider, and I'm just going to add a text, Text Mesh Pro. If you don't have this installed, you can just go to Window Package Manager and get it from the Unity registry. Now here, I'm just gonna put level zero as sort of dummy text to show us what things will look like. And then you can set this up how you like. I'll be using bangers, I'm gonna set my vertex color to black, give it a size of 48, center it. I'm also going to name this level text. All right, at this point, we are ready to get coding. So let's right click down in our assets folder, go to create C sharp script, and I'm gonna call this one experience manager. Let's open that up. All right, so in the experience manager, before we set up anything with the slider, we wanna get our experience and leveling actually going. So let's get rid of start and update. And here I'm gonna create some variables. We'll need a public integer for our level, another public integer for our current experience, and one more for our experience to level. I'll initialize this at 10. And this will just be how much experience we need to gain a new level. Now down below, we're gonna create a new method. We'll make a public void called gain experience, and it's gonna take in an integer, which will be the amount of experience we're gaining. And essentially when this is called, we'll just pass in how much experience we've gained and we'll take our current experience and add the new amount to it. If our current experience gets to be greater than or equal to the amount of experience we need to level, we want to add one to our level. Level plus plus is the same as just saying add one to the level. Now I do wanna keep with a separation of concerns here where we have each method doing just one main thing. So I'm gonna create another method here for our level up procedure. And this can be where we would add things like any graphic or sound effect we want to play when we level up. So for now, we're just gonna move the level plus plus into here. Then what we also wanna do is take our current experience and subtract the experience to level. So say we got to 11 experience, at this point we would take away the 10, 
and have the one left over working towards our next level. Now at this point, we want to actually have our experience to level scale so that it's not always the same amount for each level. To do this, I'm just going to head up top and create a new float, which will be our experience growth multiplier. I'll make mine 1.2, which essentially just means it's gonna go up by 20% each time, but you can pick whatever number you like. So our experience level is going to be equal to, and here we're going to use a math function, which is just round to integer. After all, our experience is an integer, so we don't want decimals floating around. And then in here, we're just going to take our experience to level and multiply it by the growth multiplier, essentially just making it grow by 20% each time. Now with this done, we just need a way to test it. So I'm going to add back our update method. And here I'm just going to check. So if input.getKeyDown, here I'll use the key code return. So essentially if I push the return key, we're just gonna call the gain experience method and pass in to experience. So now in Unity, I can click on the experience canvas, add that experience manager, and while our UI won't work yet, we can hit play and each time I hit return, we'll see that our current experience goes up by two. And ultimately once it gets to 10, our level goes up and our experience resets and the experience to level does go up by 20%. So next, let's actually hook up our UI. I'm just going to add the namespace using unityengine.ui. And now let's make a reference to our slider. We can call this one experience slider. And I also want to get our text. So to do this, we need to let it know we're using TextMesh Pro. And now we can reference the text itself. I'll make a public TMP underscore text called current level text. So again, we're going to make a new method for this. I'm going to call this one update UI. And each time we want our UI to change, we'll call this method. So here, we're just going to get our experience slider and set its max value. Now, if we go in Unity and look at it, you can see right now it's set between 0 and 1. But we want this to automatically change so that the max value is always the same as our experience to level. We also want to set our current value to always be equal to whatever our current experience is. Finally, we'll take our current level text, which is just the TextMesh Pro component, and we want to look at the text specifically on it and make sure that it always says level, colon, space, and then lists our current level. Now, we'll want to call this right at the start of the game, so let's add back our start method where we can put update UI. Additionally, each time we gain experience, we're going to want to update our UI. So let's come down here, and after we've done our change of experience and check for a level up, we'll update the user interface. We're ready to test again, but there's a little setup. We need to make sure that our slider is in that box so the experience manager can talk to it and do the same with our level text. Now in play mode, we can hit return to see our bar slowly increase. It resets each time we level and our text increases. You can also see that I'm having to hit return more each time because our multiplier keeps working and our experience to level is more each time. All right, all that's left now is to show how we can hook this up so that, say, defeating an enemy will actually give us experience. And you'll be able to use the same code if you have items that give you experience or quests or however you want to set things up. So next, you just want to decide when you want your player to actually gain experience. For me, it's going to be in my enemy health script, which is where the logic runs for when my enemy dies. You can see here that when my enemy's current health gets to be less than or equal to zero, I destroy him. So I just want to go before he gets destroyed. And there I want to broadcast a message that the enemy's been defeated. And I also want to send how much experience he's worth. Now, there are a lot of different ways to send messages between scripts. We often use references within the scripts themselves. In our stats video, I showed the singleton pattern, which can be very useful, but also introduces tight coupling between classes so that they won't work if one or the other is missing. So in this video, we're going to look at the observer pattern, which allows us to create a delegate, a sort of contract for the event, and then to make an event itself, which will be called when something happens, and only those scripts that are listening for it will actually get the message. Here's how that works. So first off, we need to decide how much experience this enemy is worth. So let's make an integer called experience reward, and I'm just going to go with three. At this point, we can create our delegate which is that contract that decides what information we're going to pass along. We'll call this one monster defeated, and it's going to pass an integer, which will be the experience amount. At this point, we can actually create our event. This will be a static event, meaning there's only one of them in our game. It will have the same name as the delegate, monster defeated. And then we're actually going to give it a name, which is how we'll refer to it in our scripts, as on monster defeated. Now other events can listen for on monster defeated and they'll get the information, the experience, whenever a monster is actually defeated. 
So here now, when our enemy runs out of health, we want to call that on monster defeated event, and we want to pass in the experience reward that he's worth. Now we just need to make it so that our experience manager is listening for when this happens. So to listen to events like this, what we need to do is subscribe to them. And this is generally done in the on enable method. Here, we're just going to tell it that it's listening to enemy health dot on monster defeated. And here we're going to put plus because we are adding a listener to it. And we just want to call a method. You can name this anything you want, but I want to call my gain experience method. So I'm going to put that here. Then on disable, we want to unsubscribe from this. And this just helps to keep our game running efficiently so that we don't have things listening when they aren't actually even enabled and supposed to be running. So now when the monster's defeated, he will send out this event. All listeners will be listening to it and the gain experience method will be called. Let's test this. All right, so now when we get in the game, I can walk over to my enemy, I can attack him, and you'll notice that when he's defeated, I do in fact gain experience. The message is sent and I received it. All right, I hope you found this one helpful. In later videos, we'll be using this to create a skill tree and perhaps ability system. Let me know down in the comments what else you'd like to see next in the series. Until that next video, this is Matt here with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.